Hello, my name is Anne, and today I'm going to talk to you about nine things that, in my opinion, uh, some Android manufacturers are doing uh, a bit wrong with their Android devices in general. Uh, so this list is not going to be in any uh, specific uh, order. Um, I'm just going to list them randomly. So uh, without any further ado, let's get to begin with. Uh, I like to talk about one thing that every single manufacturer uh, have on every single smartphone. This guy. This is the Google folder containing all of the app uh, that belongs to Google. They put them in a very tiny little space right here in one tiny little folder. And I don't know why that most Android manufacturers uh, just like putting all of the app on the home screen like this, but then they put all uh, the Google apps into this very tiny little folder. And uh, to make this, and uh, furthermore, this these apps are actually one of uh, the most commonly used apps by a lot of people, right? These apps are used by a lot more people than like like messages or internet by Samsung. They don't use that, they use these instead and they just put them in this folder, right? Kinda. Second thing that I wanna talk about is bloatware. Now bloatware is a um, type of uh, applications, usually a, a uh, big number of applications uh, that is included in your phone as extras like as extra applications uh it's not it's not crucial or something like that is is um it isn't crucial or something like that uh but um you know it's like a little uh, bit of you know, applications uh to show the cooperation with some manufacturers like microsoft for example and i don't know why that they included it even though there are completely installable you can install them anti android phones on google play and the second thing is some of the carrier applications like AT&T um, applications or T-Mobile applications uh, they are uninstallable and uh, they are very annoying some of the applications are already on your smartphones and they just duplicate that uh, very annoying. Now, number three is that they will customize their phone, but in a way that it is not similar to Google's. Uh, for example, uh, we have, I mean, there aren't a lot on this phone, so I will take another example of this thing. This is another phone that I've been carrying around. As you can see, let me just bring down the brightness. And as you can see, this is a, uh, this is a notification center, right? This is a notification center. Uh, it is, and the, and the quick toggles is right on the bottom, right? This is fine, but uh, Google's intention is, to, but Google's intention uh, is to put notification center right here, notification center right, notification center right here, and swipe another way. You will get to quick settings, right? This is what Google intends to do on smartphones. It will be a lot cleaner, uh, a little a bit less cluttered, and it creates a much more convenient way of, uh, you know, man of, um, you know, uh, going around the OS, right? Unlike this one, uh, this one was very cluttered. This one, like notification center right, right here already, but they don't have an option to swipe down. Instead, they have to swipe from, uh, swipe up in order to get to the quick toggles. I mean, for Android users, switching from another one phone to another is going to be quite a uh, learning curve because they have, they customize their Android phones uh, to a way that no one even like recognizes Android anymore, uh, which is a very... Now this next one will be a little bit minor, but um, some Android manufacturers usually exclude uh, some of uh, Google's feature in Android. Uh, the first of all, first of which is multi-user. For example, this phone does not have any sorts of uh, multi-user at all, feature at all, which is a feature that is um, 
I was uh, stated back in Android 5.0, but um, some of the mid-range phones like the Samsung Galaxy J7 uh, does not have uh, multi-user support and in order to activate it uh, you have to root the device and then uh, edit the build.prop which is very complicated and very risky um, uh, some of the others like uh, camera to API uh, which helps for manual mode and um, especially some of the Xiaomi's uh, Mi 6 when it launched with Mi Y8 uh, does not have any Android 7.1 features like uh, edit the display size or the screen quick switch anything like that so that is one of the examples five is some Android manufacturers will not use Google's stock app that's already in the phone but they will use uh, their stock applications uh, Samsung is one of the uh, manufacturers that does this uh, first take Samsung they don't use they, they have Google apps already on board so you can see Chrome Gmail but they still make their own apps for example Samsung internet or let's say um, Samsung email or Galaxy apps or um, uh, let's say gallery or calculator these apps are already on they're already made by Google and on their phone already but they somehow like uh, still want to make their own version of apps it's not by it's not just Samsung but LG um, a lot more manufacturers uh, more Chinese manufacturers would uh, not put Google app as default but they would use their own apps. Uh, there are various reasons, but um, some, most of which aren't that a uh, lot uh, practical. Uh, so that's one of the, oh, the number six is one of the most common problems for most Android manufacturers is slow software updates. So as you can see, this phone, the Galaxy J7, is on Android 7.0 with Samsung Experience 8.1 and look at the security pass level it's quite outdated at August 1st 2017 uh, well right now the latest is now January 2018 uh, now some of the manufacturers like <clears throat> Okay, excuse me. Uh, now, some some people said that the reason for that was the fact that Samsung is a big company, so they don't have much time taking care of the software updates. Um, my answer is taking a look at Google's. Google is also a very big company, uh, almost as almost as big as Samsung, but their uh, update frequency is a lot higher and then this phones any phones pixel nexus uh they take care of their software updates really well they push up they push out updates um, very frequently i mean around w once a month uh this phone and i guess like the galaxy s8 the note 8 wouldn't get that uh frequently uh this phone it doesn't even get any software updates uh like since I updated to 7.0 Nugget um, through OTA, um, through OTA, like there is still no software update at all. Um, and let's take a look at another example, which is even serious. This is the another phone, and uh, this phone is still running at a three-year-old Android 5.1 with a security pass level in August on January 2016 kind of old very old I mean um, even though this phone is running on a Snapdragon 801 which is which does not support Android 7 um, I mean but at least they should put marshmallow on this phone for example uh, which is a very very bad news for most Android phones and more generally Android manufacturers. now this next one is a little bit more related to accessories and that is a limited hardware support um, let's say for example this headphones here by uh, my phone supplied uh, this that headphones does not work uh, it is USB type C as you can see 
but it does not work on any other USB Type-C phones uh, apart from my phone, which is the one that is using, that is uh, included with. And um, it's very disappointing but that even though they use the same port, USB-C, uh, their accessories don't work equally on cross uh, branding. For example, a Samsung AKG headphones works for the Galaxy S8, the Note 8, but when you put it to, into like the Mi 6, a OnePlus 5, or any phones with USB Type C, the quality isn't enough, isn't as good as Samsung's, or may produce issues like um, imbalancing or loss in like. Bay, uh, in bass equalizer or something like that it's um it's very complicated and not just headphones but a lot more accessories don't work cross brandings for like um usb c fast charger you yeah, made fast charger may actually work but uh a lot more i cannot name them uh but generally uh the, i mean i just thought that the software was different on uh, a lot of smartphones, but it turns out that the hardware is also diff is also not the same, which is very very. Simple. Number eight is some manufacturers like OnePlus or Blue have recently been accused of putting in tracking software, uh, software that uh, allows them to collect personal data, personal infos like credit card number. A name, phone number, and that is something that is very concerning to most people. Uh, because I don't know why they would do this for security reasons or for any other reasons, I don't know. Uh, but um, some manufacturers are trying to collect users' info by just selling their phones, right? And then put in tracking software, hidden software, and hidden apps that. Um, just secretly trying to track down um, what the users are doing, uh, maybe for advertisement or for suggestion or something. Uh, but I think that they shouldn't have done that. They shouldn't have. They should have uh, done something a little bit more, a little bit better, like um, you know, uh, making a survey, asking on Twitter or something like that. It would be a lot better for them to know what users. Are. Last one, the last but not least, is. Some manufacturers, some very rare manufacturers, and I have this phone right here. This phone um, is unrootable. It's very secure. It's a very secure phone that uh, some people are find it very difficult to root or even access uh, Android debug bridge to this phone. And that is the last problem is that some manufacturers don't allow root. Root is a this is similar to jailbreak in iOS, uh, allows that which allows user to get deep into the OS and makes uh, a plethora of mods uh, to the Android phones like adding apps, putting customizations, installing expos, um, a lot of very very interesting things. This is what Android is made for. Android is made for some small people. To be able to root, right? One of the reasons why Android is so popular is that it is rootable. Uh, Google completely allows rooting, but some manufacturers just disapprove it. Like this brand, BeCalf, uh, launches the B phone. This phone does is very hard. It's, it's very difficult to get rooted to get root access. Or another brand is BlackBerry with. Uh, from the proof to all the way to the BlackBerry Motion, they don't, uh, none of the, the, their phones are rootable. Okay, it's fine, it's for security, but I think that not allowing rooting is something that is a little bit overdoing. Um, I mean, security, I mean, great, it's fine, uh, it's very beneficial, you can clear up virus, clean up your phone, but um, I mean, if you want to root your phones, I mean, a lot of people want to root their phones, but uh, their manufacturers won't allow them. That is the killing thing. So that is uh, nine problems that I think that manufacturers are facing with. They are doing very uh, misleadingly 
and I hope that these issues will somewhat get resolved in the future uh, as time goes on, as more later Android version releases. I hope that these companies will acknowledge this and uh, try to address these issues uh, or else the customers will be quite um, upset like me because some of the things that they do on this phone is um, uh, kind of annoying and is uh, is kind of misleading so anyways uh, thank you for watching uh, I hope you got helped you um, really enjoy this video I haven't done any of these for a long time uh, so thank you and goodbye